again, I, uh, I thank you for coming. And this is something new. This is something new for us. Over the last 20 years, 19 and a half years, being a career uh, department with the with the city of Española, it has been it's been an honor to serve you as the public. Um, it's been one of the greatest things I've ever done in my life, and thank you. And I'm sure that all the other firefighters that are in here um, feel exactly the same way. We really enjoy our job, and we're here for you. Thank you, guys. Uh, you're welcome. Um, but throughout the years, we've we've evolved. We've become bigger. We're adv we're advancing. We're growing, and uh, uh, that's what we're doing. Is we're growing, and co through collective bargaining, we have we have we've learned on both sides, and we create. I, I can't say it enough that working with the city of Española over the years, uh, we we are not a union. We are not a city. We are a team. And that's what we, that's how I look at it, as we look at it. We're a team to make this better. And thank you guys again for coming. I'm going to turn this over. You won't, you won't hear my voice anymore tonight. Well, maybe a little bit at the end. But I want you know our uh, one thing I'd like to say is our uh, some of the city, some of our city government we worked really well with. Uh, we had negotiations last year and. Uh, we worked real well with the, with the city manager, and we had a, a, a really great relationship, and I'd like to thank him and his staff. Uh, but again, I'm going to be quiet, because Teresa will put up a flag, and she'll tell me to quit talking. So I'm going to hand it over to, to uh, Valerie and these gentlemen, and thank you for coming. Okay, can everybody hear me back there? Yes. Um, so as you heard, my name is Adriana Ortiz, I am currently uh, serving on the city council. I have I have been since 2014. Um, I'm currently the uh, mayor pro tem for the city. Um, I am a lifelong resident of Española. I was born and raised here in Ranchitos. Um, I grew up here, went to school here, graduated from Española Valley. Um, I. I've been involved in local government administration for the last 16 years, and that has really given me a foundation to understand and be in a position where I can offer my uh, abilities to uh, the city of Española and making sure that we are, are running a, uh, a city that we can be very proud of. Um, as part of my job, um, I've I've been able to obtain several um, education opportunities, and I'm currently a certified public official, a certified public supervisor, and I'm going to be a student certified public manager. And, and this is a, a certification that comes from the state that it, it's, a, it's a national recognized professional development program for elected officials specifically, and public employees, so that uh, you can gain uh, leadership development and educate people so you can operate in a leadership role. As part of my 15 years of local government experience and knowledge in um, administration of policies, budget development and oversight, records management and election administration, I have been able to participate on statewide committees that have been able to serve our constituents. I have served on statewide legislative lobbying committees that have helped legislation go before the state. Um, I decided four years ago to run um, because I felt like I could make a difference. I care about us being I truly do. And I feel like I'm in a position to help the city. Um, during my time serving on the city council, I've been able to uh, take steps to um, get our city in a better spot. And right now, I feel like my knowledge base in government administration has given me a positive um, position to be mayor of the city of Espanola. Um, like I said, I've been in government for quite a while. And I, I really um, 
Bill, I am the a perfect candidate for the next mayor of the city of Espiola. Uh, Mike Mike Yes. Yes. Thank you. I want to like, I want to thank the local party <coughs> that's been on tonight. And Robert Steves, as you, as you all of you know of me, and I've been really served on the city council for a little under 20 years. I've been in all the committees in the city. I support the fire <coughs> department and the police department and the budgets. Many, many years I was gone, there was a call with a, the audits and we're able to get funding for the fire department and the police department. And we're part of the audit, we're caught up now, and we can go after funding. And this administration has not believed in hiring grant writers to do that. And I will. I appreciate the firefighters. I personally experienced what they do when I had a car accident a while back, and uh, they help. They help us to, we're hurt, and we don't know what's going on, they help us. They come very, and I appreciate you. I'll do all I can for you. Thank you. Bringing us here together. Can you hear me in the back? Yes. Wonderful. And like Ron, I'm a little nervous too, so please, uh, you know, take it easy on us, as it's our first time. Before I tell you who I am or where I plan to go, I'll give you a little bit of detail about where I'm from. One of the proudest days that my mom would tell anybody about, would listen, was the one day that she spent an afternoon in jail. Not exactly the kind of story typical for, a, for any mom, right? The reason that she wound up in jail for that one afternoon was because she founded a local union at the shop that she worked. It was a clothing manufacturing company, and there were maybe 50, hundreds of rows of sewing women, and that's all they would do all day long. They were shipping jobs uh, across to Mexico. So what did she do? She said, I'm going to get my hands dirty. I'm going to fight for the rights that we deserve, the rights that we need. When she fought back, they put her in jail for the day, for the afternoon. And to this day, that was the proudest moment of her life. So unions run through my blood because she would take me from union hall to union hall trying to organize people and tell them the need for management to understand what it's like to be a laborer. She taught me the value at that moment that every human being has and how important it is for management to respect its employees and how important it is for employees to understand how to get the job done, how to be safe on the job, and the requirements that are necessary to get it done. With a sweat off her back, she made sure that I'd go to college. She made sure that I got straight A's. She pushed me to be the best that I could become. She pushed me and, thank God, got me into Yale University. We know what it's like to be poor. Our best and most exciting times were Fridays. We'd go out to eat. We didn't really go out to eat. What we'd do is we'd order from the cheapest place that we could get. 16 to $20 fed five of us. There's nothing wrong with being poor. Take pride in everything that you do. And one of the things that my mom taught me is go home Work hard, but make sure that you've earned every penny that you get. And if you don't feel like you're getting that penny's earned, you make a difference. You do whatever it takes. That's the stock that I come from. The stock about taking pride in everything that you do. And that's the kind of attitude that I want to bring to this bell. What do you see are the biggest challenges facing the Española City Fire Department and our firefighters, both now and in years to come? For that question, I believe monies, I believe funding sources, and uh, as you all know, that the city pays for all the salaries of the firefighters, and we depend on the firefighters in the state of Mexico to buy all the equipment. And uh, there's a lot of grants out there, guys, for firefighters. We need to initiate the funding sources of the firefighters. We need to hire grant writers. And if elected mayor, I will do exactly that. I will hire grant writers to find money for the firefighters. They deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Some of the biggest challenges that I know uh, the City of Espanola Fire Department and the firefighters are facing. Um, one is infrastructure um, repairs at some of the fire stations. 
Um, I've been to the fire station and um, across City Hall, and there are uh, some uh, repairs, so I think that's one immediate need um, for the fire department. Another challenge that's facing the fire department is their need for uh, replacement and acquisition of equipment um, so that they can do their job with the resources um, that they need to do their job properly. Also, I feel another challenge that the city uh, is the fire department is facing um, now and even in the years to come is their level of compensation and personnel in the fire department. Um, Fire, de fire department staffing is a, is a need, not a want. We need to make sure that we have a fire department that is adequately staffed to respond uh, appropriately um, to emergencies because we're dealing, they're dealing with life and death situations. You know, um, as we all know, budget is a major challenge that um, not only the fire department but the city as a whole faces and. That is one big um, challenge that we'll be facing the fire department and the city. And you know, it's, it's the million dollar question, how do we do more um, with stable or just diminishing resources? Um, calls for medical services have gone up and the guys are tremendously busy. And yet they're having to do more and more with less sometimes, so I think working together on some these four key items is where I feel I'm going to uh, start in collective mayor. Thank you. Important issues here, so I'll just add two more to that. One of them, is, which is, uh, in my opinion, the most important, is to find a continuous revenue stream so that we can do all of the things that we're talking about. So we can promise the fire department a brand new truck, and that's great, but how do we then keep that truck functioning all of the time? What kind of a revenue stream do we promise the fire department for things like training and job, uh, further job training so that these guys are safe? There's nothing more important than knowing at the end of the day that you get home safely and that you serve the community well. The only way you can do that is with strong infrastructure, like we said earlier. But you have to have that revenue stream and a constant. We can't just be going only looking for a grant to fix one thing at a time. As a city, we have to invest in that long term. The other thing that I'd like to add is the need to retain the qualified men and women that we train. There's nothing worse than providing this city with nothing but a training ground for people to move up and beyond into other cities that pay higher wages like Los Alamos or Santa Fe. And it's not fair that these places just come in and cherry pick who they want and raid our department, we need to make sure that we have the revenue stream to provide the training, the quality of life that these men and women have and want, because they're proud of being in the Valley, so we need to at least match that pride and make sure that they're taken care of. Um, so how can you create a better working relationship with the surrounding Native American tribes for the betterment and safety of the community? One of the positives that I've been speaking to, uh, or one of the positives that comes out when speaking with the fire department is the really good working relationship that we have with the Santa Clara Pueblo. It's all about reaching out, and I think one of the things that we've been too fearful of in the past is an assumed response from the other side, and we're never willing to open up and at least listen. We learned, I'll say I learned this way back when, when my mom was dealing with things like collaborative uh, negotiations. The most important thing that you can do is listen to what other people are, are, are doing. So reaching out is going to be truly effective and necessary, realizing that there will always be compromise on both sides. And the most important thing is trying to find a commonality. We are in this together, and all too often we look at it as a negative. All too often we look at it as being sandwiched between two Pueblos, and that's a great opportunity rather than uh, something that we can use as a way of saying something can be done. As any government uh, at any level in the United States uh, finds today, relationships between Native American tribes and political units can be challenging and very complex. Uh, mutual interests are clear. Obviously, we both, uh, our goals are the same. 
both local governments and tribes want to use resources effectively. We want to provide comprehensive services in a safe environment, and we also want to protect our natural environment and sustain healthy economies. I think for relationships between us and our Native American uh, tribes, all involved need to make a genuine commitment to relationship building and cooperation. We need to be able to genuinely reach out and talk with them in an open forum and ensure and start that communication. And not only when um, there's a crisis, but start um, talking with, with each other on issues before we get to that point. It's important that you also establish a mutual understanding and acceptance and credibility, both in terms of the general understanding of our intergovernmental dynamic and understanding of the parties' concerns and specific issues. Sometimes when we're dealing with our Native American tribes, there's a lot of complex issues uh, between us, and it's very hard for us to uh, digest all of that, so we really need to work on taking that and separating all of that and making things a little bit simpler for us so that we can work uh, collectively with them and, and move forward on some of the issues that we have. And I think we also need to have regular meetings and maybe activities with them so that we can enhance our communication with them. Obviously, you know, we need to uh, work together. We are, we are in this community together. We have we're intertwined, and as we continue forward, if we work together, we can only prosper. I believe the Espinal Fire Department sets a great example for the city of Espinal. We get all the neighbors. We need to follow that nice. We need to talk at the table. We need to communicate with each other, and we need to work with each other. It's work in progress. As, as mayor elected, if I'm elected for mayor, I will do those things. I will sit on the table and talk to our neighbors. The fire department, when you have fire, no matter where it is, the fire department works together with the Native Americans. It's awesome to see. And we have to do that, guys. As a community, we have to do that. We have to communicate. We have to talk to each other. We have to work with each other. Thank you. In recognizing the significance of our priorities uh, as firefighters and public servants, uh, sometimes there's a struggle between safety issues and the reality of budget fiscal concerns. Um, having said that, what would be your policy for union officials and representing their members uh, to address yourself, council, or general public? Oh, can you repeat that question? Sure. Thank you. I winged it some <laughs> Given our budget, fiscal concerns, and safety concerns with firefighters, what would be your position on us as elected union representatives advocating for our members of the public, your office, the city council, and the general public. Thank you. So I, I feel it's important that we, with our budget, you know, with budget constraints as they are, I think it's very important that the city work uh, collaboratively and help uh, support the lobbying efforts uh, of the fire department. Um, I think it's very important that we provide adequate resources to them so that they can do their job um, to the best of their ability. And as a former member of a statewide uh, legislative committee, I have firsthand experience examining, recommending, and lobbying for state at the state legislature. And I think there's a lot of issues at the state level with budget, um, in particular with the fire department. And I think we need to really ensure that when things are happening at the state legislature in January, February, and March, that we really work together to make sure that we're keeping the interests of our, our fire department um, at heart. And I would definitely, as the mayor of the city of Espanola, support the fire's uh, department's uh, lobbying uh, and uh, efforts to get more money. More people get involved in the better it is. The fire department and the city of Espanola will come together and Fire the fire union and make it make it awesome. It gives a better chance to get funding for the fire department. And we all have to learn to come to other folks. We have to learn to talk to each other. Communication is a thing, the key. We all work together in one direction and we'll get things done. Thank you.
I understand the question correctly, it also has to do with the openness between the department and the community, as well as communication streams up and down the chain of command. And I think you hit on a very important point, which is that true leadership comes from the top and explains all of the things that are going on in the department, especially at times when budgets are short. And there's nothing worse than being in a situation or a position not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow or not really fully understanding what's going on. And I truly grasp the importance of ensuring that everybody's on the same page before we make a decision so that everybody understands the gravity uh, with which to approach our jobs. And that openness starts at the top to ensure that everybody is on, on the same page, make sure that we're communicating up and down the channels that are there. But what's really important to me is that openness uh, with communication. There's got to be uh, that sense that anything, uh, anybody can talk and anybody will talk. So that is always a, a, an issue, and uh, you don't want things coming up and creeping up from behind, and that's why when those channels of communication are always open, good leadership will know what's going on and where it's coming from so that we're not sideswiped. And so long as everybody's on the same page, that's really the good way and the best way to get everybody on board with the, uh, like I said, especially in times when we're shifting or making changes so that everybody understands why the change is coming or where we're headed. Um, keeping sight of that vision is crucial because otherwise rumors start, divisiveness begins, or people don't understand where we're going. Thank you. and to only answer the city manager. And that's what I, I believe. And the chief can, police chief can run his department and the fire chief can run the department. And they'll answer the city manager. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Seeds. We definitely need to have somebody who's in charge of that department and not for the sake of just being in charge of it, but because of the fact that the department needs for the fire department are similar, but also extremely different from those that are required in the police department. Who's gonna know better what the fire department needs than somebody who's in charge of these men and women all day long? Somebody who knows exactly what's going on. And like I said, the restrictions are different, the demands are different, the training is different. And we need to be able to bring all of those things together and have somebody who can fight for these guys who can make the decisions that need to be made. Uh, I understand that in the past, the police uh, chief has, has, of course, asked what is needed, what's necessary, tried to get a grasp of it, but unless you run through that every single day, I think it's really difficult to understand what the true needs of that department are. In addition, it will provide an opportunity to really work with the grant writers. That's one of the things that Mr. C.T. was talking about. That dedicated person to go to the grant writer and say, look, this is really what we need and be able to prioritize in a much better fashion than to make assumptions. Uh, I would also agree. I feel like the police department and the fire department would probably work um, under better circumstances if they weren't separated. Um, I think having a, a fire chief that has the authority and um, has the leadership to run that department and make sure the needs of that particular department are being met will definitely improve 
the services to our citizens. So I too would agree that separating them would be in the best interest of the city. What are your views uh, on an issue that's been uh, heavily debated in our legislature for the past couple of sessions, and that is one uh, of right to work. What are your views on right to work? Okay, so the, the right to work, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, is the legislative issue that um, allows an organization to dismiss an employee without cause. Is that correct? Sir, uh, I'll clarify the question. Okay. The right to work is something that's used, it's a coined phrase that's used to, uh, in our view, uh, compromise labor to a point where uh, not allowing, I'm sorry, a member can choose whether to be in a union or not. And uh, we, we are definitely a, opposed to it, obviously, as laborers. But this would basically mandate that we couldn't collect a fair share fee from those who are not union members. Okay, trust me, I, know, I, I think I know what you're talking about now because that was one of the issues way back when where it was, it used to be this way, where you couldn't deduct it from a paycheck at, at the place of employment if you weren't part of the union. That's one of the components, yes. That's right, I think that's a really important part of the component. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% familiar with exactly how that affects the department or the management company or system. But what I will tell you is that by the time that we get to that point, in my opinion, management has already failed. And I'll tell you why. Because as a business operator, it has happened in the past where I've maybe dropped the ball on a particular employee and unfortunately left me because it was my fault. I take a tremendous amount of responsibility for maintaining the happiness and the safety of all of the people that I work with. So when we're already talking about things like right to work, or in this case, whether or not we can take money out of the paycheck or not, then I've already failed. So looking at it from that perspective, it doesn't really matter whether or not we're allowed to do so. And in other words, it's a good safety check for me as a manager to know that the employees are taken care of if I don't do so. Form two, even the playing field for employees to an entity that they work for. I remember back in the days of 1993 and 1998, <coughs> the council, 1994, 98, I'm sorry, and uh, there was an issue that came up and I would talk to the people that were having issues and I'd say, look, give me a chance to fix these, if I can't fix them for union. And I got out in 98 and all the department for the union in the city of Espanol. I believe that they need the unions to equal the playing field for the employees. The, the city, sometimes government, does not do what they need to do to ensure safety for their employees. And the unions fight for their employees, and that's what they do. Thank you. Uh, as was stated earlier, I also feel as though uh, if we're at a point where there has been union moved in, there may be times where things needed to be done at the management level. But having said that, I 100% support the, um, and believe that our public can be better served by a system in which employees collective bargaining rights. And oftentimes, as was stated, it, it will improve certain circumstances for the employees, and it does make things in their favor um, in terms of ensuring that their needs are met from the government and I believe that they should have the right to to do that. Thank you. The Espanola Fire Department is currently understaffed and that is a safety concern for the community. The question is what can the governing body do to address this issue? I'm asking you what will the governing body do to address this issue? and start with Adriana. Thank you. So, I feel as though the uh, fire department um, is currently in the staff, so that's, I, no one's gonna argue that. As far as what we're gonna do, I think my first priority will be to invest in the people that we currently have there and start setting up uh, 
of structure as a department and laying out a plan to get additional staffing. As far as um, as far as the standards go, we are currently operating at the minimum levels on any given shift. And that puts a stress on our folks as, as they are out in the field. Um, it also extends um, response time in some cases. So it's really important that we make a plan and we start going down and realizing what we need to do to make sure we have adequate staff at the fire department. I think it's important that we work with the leadership in the fire department and design a very competitive um, marketed pay so that we can attract personnel to our department, retain personnel in our department, and we can uh, work on maintaining that as time goes on. Uh, I understand the police department is, the, the fire department is short handed. The economic times we live in today, it's not, it's not in the laws to expand them, to expand the resources of the department. That's why I mentioned earlier we need to go to grant writers. We need to find grants out there, guys. There's grants for firefighting all over the place. And we need to be aggressive to look at those events. I believe in transition to the fire department. Years ago, we, we hired a fire department. You know, we used to be a volunteer source. And I believe that, that we can go back to that. I think I would like to include some of the community for firefighting. I believe the tools are here. Our fully staffed fire department can train and, and show them the right path. And how far we get assistance from our neighbors, the uh, Native Americans. And uh, I'll do what I can. If elected for mayor, I'll do what I can to staff the department. Thank you. So staffing is easy, right? If you understaff, hire more people. Well, the real challenge is to find money for that staff. It's not about saying, oh, well, we can just hire three more people because that'll help our safety rating. It's about finding a continuous stream of money in this economy and in this vibrant valley. Okay? We say, in this economy, it's tough. No, it's not. We've been on a record roll since 2008 nationwide. The gross receipts for uh, this city, for Española, have shrunk from about $15 million 15 years ago to $10 million. Now, why is that? Okay. One of the things that I'd like to propose is in this comprehensive plan that we have, we don't talk at all about things uh, like, um, uh, the word escapes me, but uh, when, let's say we're gonna build a new building, we have to have a site plan, and we have to charge a fee for it. Okay. When uh, new companies come into town, we tell them, oh no, no, it's okay, you don't have to pay those fees because you know, we're a poor town. It shouldn't be that way. We have to start to grow up and act like a real city. When somebody wants to move in here, we charge the taxes that are necessary. Impact fees, that's the word I'm looking for. Impact fees, and what do those fees go toward? They go toward the fire department. And why is that important? Because the fire department has to then determine how many new vehicles are gonna be driving by, how many new people are gonna be in and out of that building, how do we protect them, how do we protect ourselves, and how do we get the equipment to get there? These are the kinds of challenges that need to be met, and it's not just about things like, oh, hire a couple more people, and, and maybe we can improve our volunteer firefighters. No, this is about raising a community, going back from $10 million in the budget, we gotta get up to $15 million again. I, I don't know what, what's going on, but we have to have a vision that creates a city where we say, in these economic times, and then we'll actually be proud of these economic times. Instead of saying, well, you know how hard things are, not for the rest of the country. Why do we get left behind? Okay, I think it's because we settled for too little. Our department deserves more, this valley deserves more. So, I'm running for mayor because I want to continue serving my community, bottom line. Three, a little over three years ago when I first ran, I did it because I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to help solve problems that our city was facing. 
and I feel these last four years, I've really made a strive to help do that. And I am willing and ready to continue working for my community. And that is why I would like everyone's support. And I can tell you from working with all the great folks in the fire department, in the city, um, all the city employees, it has been nothing but a, a great pleasure working with these people. They truly are the heart of the city. They work above and beyond to get everybody um, everything they need, and the, the, the citizens of this valley are very fortunate for the employees that we have. And the fire department as a whole, they do a wonderful job with the resources that they have. And as mayor, I look forward to working with the fire department specifically and making sure that we continue to grow that department in terms of ensuring that their resources are met because there is a great impact to public safety if we are not meeting those needs of the fire department. So as mayor, I will definitely help with that. Thank you. As your mayor, you can trust that I will do what our city needs to go and provide a safe and wonderful place to live. I love this city. And I have raised my own business here for 46 years. I've had my business in this one for 46 years. I have raised my own family here. And I just like my own. I want yours to be safe as, as well. I have experience and the political know-how to create and improve relationships within our neighbors. I understand what it takes to work within our limits, limited resources. And in spite of our challenges, we continue to move us forward. I am not a newcomer to this game. I will not waste precious resources and time trying to learn and figure things out. I have experience in the inner works of city government and how to get our city in a competitive and productive role. I ask for your consideration and vote as your mayor, and also ask for your, to join me and support the U.S. Bill 14, who brings a, a wealth of knowledge and diversity. And together, we will get things done. Thank you. To the men and the women who represent us, I'm proud of you, and I appreciate you. And that's easier said than done. And the reason that I say it's easier said than done is because of the fact that you guys are the ones who wind up doing all of the work in the background, quietly, but with pride and with passion. You guys have been to my family's home at the worst of times, and you handled yourselves with class, dignity, and everything that you did was top notch. So. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. When you go out on a call, or when you're just thinking at any other given time, one of the things that always comes to mind is take care of yourselves so that you can take care of others. The only way you can do that is with the right equipment, with the right training, so that you get home safely. And when you get home safely, you kiss your spouse, your children, or maybe even your pet. Maybe you can also think that you saved a life. The only way you can do that is with the support and the vision of somebody who isn't trying to scramble to get a fire engine or scramble to get a piece of equipment, but is actually dedicating resources to those vital equipment needs.